This is the Action Man 50th anniversary panel featuring Dave Tree. So uh, let's give it up for him. <laughs> and let's get started. Hello, everybody. I, uh, hi. Uh, I'm Chris McLeod from the Full Force podcast. And uh, I'm uh, interested. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, our two fans. Um, and I'm here to introduce the one and only international superstar, David Tree. Give it up, please. That's a, that's a little over the top. A little over the top. A little excessive. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. You might have gathered that we're not from around this neighborhood. Uh, we've come all the way over from the UK and uh, some of you may have seen some of the presentations that we've done in, over the last few years, uh, which have always been about some element of the influence of G.I. Joe to the British market. Um, just a quick show of hands. Is this the first time anybody's ever caught the panel? Just raise a hand. Okay, so there's a few people who've returned who've seen some of these panels in the past. Every time we do a panel, we do something different. So there's always like new content. And this year, we're a little late, but this year is our 50th anniversary of what is effectively G.I. Joe as it was sold in the UK. Um, Which is also the same age as Dave. <laughs> and then some sometimes. <laughs> so we start the story. Palatoy was the distribution company for these products into the UK. Uh, it wasn't Hasbro, uh, but the story starts with this gentleman here, Alfred Pallet. He started the, the Palatoy Toy Company, and originally it was a plastics company. It was like celluloid plastics in 1919, and originally his first toy he developed was actually like a plastic windmill. He didn't really move into the toy market fully until after the Second World War, making plastic baby dolls and things like that. But he would be working with a lot of other toy companies looking for like distribution of products and things like that. And after his trip over to the States and seeing the success of G.I. Joe, he decided to like look at bringing that product over to the UK, but rebranding it slightly differently. So the name G.I. Joe was something that is very American-like. So they came up with a whole new name for Action Man, but it's essentially, originally, at that point in time, the same product. Ah, I apologize. But you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you play it back again, I'll just do the, I'll do the sound. Play it again, I'll do it manually. Okay. Okay, we'll try that again. <laughs> Technical difficulties seem to follow us wherever we go. And it's still going. <laughs> Action man. That's pretty much how it goes. <laughs> I can move my eyes. Oh. One more time. Okay. It's worth pointing out as well that up until like the late 80s, the UK only had one TV channel that could hold TV commercials. So they were very expensive, but you didn't really need to do a lot of advertising because you had that wide reach. Now he's got eagle eyes that actually move on the lookout for action up in the mountains. Down in the jungle, he drops from the skies and rises from the depths. He's all action. Look out for all these fantastic uniforms specially designed for action. And his eagle eyes. 
See, it was exactly the same that I did it. <laughs> Don't need audio. So, Palatoy started distributing Action Man, and it was an instant hit. So from that television commercial that you just saw there, it's probably a little bit different from uh, those of you who are familiar with the, the US GI Joe versions of that product, um, because rather than like following the same route that uh, the US domestic market took, uh, the British market took a very, very different route and also brought new innovations to it. Picture here is uh, the Palatoy head office that was in Colville and Le Leicester. And pictured here is the uh, principal Action Man design team. Now this was made up of many ex-servicemen uh, directly from like the Second World War. Um, so they had a direct military connection to the, the products that they were working with. But they weren't just like uh, designers, they were also like textile manufacturers as well. And whilst most toys are always seen as to be these days made out in the Far East, a lot of uh, Palatoy's Action Man products were created in the UK, particularly the outfits. So there's a whole huge factory workshop for like textiles and machinery, um, for like uh, creating the outfits and also like assembly lines as well. So here you can see that uh, the assembly of like uh, the Action Man, there's the, the, the talking commander there, and also distribution. Now Palatoy was the second largest employer of the region. So it was very much a, a, a huge, important company for that area. It employed a lot of like uh, the local staff. But Action Man became a thing that every kid wanted to be. Everyone wanted to be Action Man, you know. So they created a lot of accessories and role play toys to go with it. And also the military were directly heavily tied in as well. As a result of that, they created many outfits that reflected uh, scaled uh, representations of sp specific English military units. So here you've got the lifeguards, you had the Blues and Royals, the Highlanders, the Grenadier Guards. But they would literally create this, and it was, it was very much an honour within the British military to have their version of an outfit available for Action Man. You have other, had other elements, like the Parachute Regiment as well, with all the working parachutes. And you can see there a whole range of other outfits that were created, so very, very different to what you had over in the US with Adventure Team for around about the same point in time we're talking about here. Most of them were military themed from the Second World War. And you even had historical ones as well, so Escape from Colditz, uh, which were like little sets and things like that, but they, Palatoy also brought out a board game to accompany this, which were all uh, directly referenced from working with the ex-prisoner of war uh, um, people from, from who were held up at Colditz. You also had Transport Command, and Transport Command was kind of really some of the coolest things that were brought in to like the Action Man uh, UK market. These were like big, big toys. guy going into battle topless. <laughs> that's how I kind of figure I would be if I was in the military, but no. And it's fair to say that's exactly how all kids are in the UK now when it comes to like <laughs> this sort of stuff. But um, within there you saw uh, a reference to uh, dynamic physique. Um, Palatoy actually developed uh, three innovations principally to uh, the 12-inch action figure. The first one was the flop tear. That was actually a UK innovation that brought it back over to like the States to like be incorporated with uh, 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 G.I. Joe. The second one was the gripping hand. 
Uh, so Kung Fu Grip, as it was known over in the States. Uh, and then the third one was Dynamic Physique. Now at that point, so yeah, as, as, as Chris modeled that, Chris would model. So uh, the Dynamic Physique was slightly, uh, it was a new product that was brought in at a point where the American version of G.I. Joe had ceased to operate. But you could put the action man into a sharp shooter position. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. You're welcome. By pulling his head back, and you could do, uh, uh, there's a greater diverse range of, of movement that you could do with it. But you only had that from about 81 to 84. But going back to Transport Command, you had some really cool vehicles. You had like uh, the Scorpion tank, and the, here's the Iron Knight. You had like, a Jeep Howitzer. Combat jet. This is my favorite, the Striker Swing Fire. So uh, this is like a little APC, which got like little pump activated rockets, little rocket launcher at the back there. But you had other uh, military vehicles. And you also had uh, uh, civil service ones as well. Now, we also had Action Man Space Rangers. This was pretty much in response to like the popularity of Star Wars. This was taking Action Man into outer space. And this was uh, a, a fresh concept, and you had this Captain Zargon, which was kind of like a, a, almost a Darth Vader. But they also incorporated elements from what was Super Joe at that time. So you've got like the, the it's a little bit bigger there, but you've got the Green Lizard there, uh, which was called Gargan in, in, in the UK market. But he was part of the. Um, Action Man Space Rangers range. Now, here's the thing. This, this, is a, this is a big deal. This is what a lot of people don't realize. We're all fans of G.I. Joe, and we're all quite excited for what's coming up uh, over the, the, the coming weekend with the uh, Hasbro announcements with like the new crossover and the Revolutions line. I will let you in on a secret. We did it first. Because we had SROM in with Action Man. And the reason because of this was Palatoy was actually owned by General Mills, so the guys who do all the cereals, and General Mills owned a whole portfolio of toy companies, including Kenner. Um, so it allowed Palatoy the advantage of amalgamating cross products into like different white lines. And so Ron, the Space Knight, which is all part of the new crossover universe, as well as Action Man and G.I. Joe, uh, Micronauts, Mask, he was originally in the Action Man line. Now, we've rehearsed this, believe it or not, once, but he would be featured in quite heavily in, in a lot of the advertising. So just to kind of get you in the mood for like the, the crossover announcements, we're going to reenact uh, an advert with Rom, the Space Knight, and Action Man. So Chris is going to do the voice of Rom. Hi. And whilst tra patrolling a distant planet, Rom encounters trouble. Conflict. I shall descend with the aid of my rocket pack. Breathing the atmosphere, Rom summons his translator to listen to the two languages alien to him. They are mortal enemies, but which are the evil ones? It is time for Rom to intervene with his energy analyzer. Your fire does me no harm. I shall now found and fight for good or for evil. Rom points his analyzer menacingly at one group of fighters. Gong! One gong! These beings represent good. He then confronts the other group. Gong! Gong! Two gongs! These beings are evil! The forces of evil open fire as Rom summons his neutralizer. The wrath of Rom is all powerful. Zap! Your days of evil are over. Rom finds he is not alone in his fight against evil. We are space rangers and we were ambushed by the intruders. Such evil finds just ends. We shall meet again and you will know me as Rom. Thank you. That's, that's enough. That's enough. Stop. So that was Space Justice by Rom. Um, and um, it was kind of like an interesting way to advertise that product and like, link him into uh, that whole product line of like, the Space Rangers. But you also had some real uh, life, some serious uh, counterparts as well. So uh, following the uh, 1980 Iranian embassy siege in uh, London, in the UK, 
uh, the SAS stormed the embassy and freed everybody inside. And it was the first time that the SAS had been in the public eye and everybody went completely nuts for it. So as a result of that, uh, Palatoy started producing uh, products that reflected the, uh, the special forces team that uh, were involved in that. And they should be playing. Let's try. Whoa. Suspenseful. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> gong. Oh, sorry, that, that, that's a two gong, surely. Yeah, that's a gong that. gong. This is evil. Uh, well, we'll skip that one. That was, that was a, 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 a short TV commercial for, for Action Man, uh, for, the, for the SAS line. But within that, that led uh, Palatoy to create uh, other sort of special forces teams and they created uh, a series called Special Teams. And this was really uh, the precursor to what was going to be the three and three quarter inch line. Action Man up to this point was the best selling toy in the boys toys market. It was the toy, it was voted toy of the decade as well throughout the 70s. But as soon as Star Wars came along, it rewrote all the rules for like toy uh, marketing and, and toy production. Reducing the scale down to three and three quarter inch meant that parents could buy more of these things and kids could get bigger toys and, and play sets and, and, and uh, other accessories to go with them. So Palatoy recognized that and they then brought in, introduced their own version of that called Action Force in 1982 and this was literally scaled representations of the best-selling Palatoy Action Man 12-inch products and I'm hoping oh let me see what I can do thank you Rob <laughs> but the the articulation was very similar to that of um, Star Wars, so it's five point. And this was done completely independently of Hasbro working on G.I. Joe. Now the story goes that neither party actually realized they were working on either of these lines. <laughs> Sorry, no, carry on. Okay, so that was uh, the, the start of the 92, uh, 1982 line, but it soon, uh, where Action Man was effectively, the play pattern was defined around the, 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 the user, the child, where he could be the good guy, he could be the bad guy. With Action Force, they weren't, they weren't things that you could already dress, they were already molded within those outfits. So the, Palatoy quickly recognized that they needed to create a narrative as a backstory to drive this product line forward. So in 1983, they kind of relaunched the, the line into specific groups and fans of G.I. Joe here will start recognizing some of the elements that they started introducing when, once they had the, the conversation with Hasbro about what was going on. They were allowed to then bring in some of the existing product that had been designed by Hasbro and bring it into the line. So you had four good teams and one bad guy. Um, and effectively you had uh, the Z Force and they were like the, the, the main infantry unit for, for Action Force. You had SAS, so they were the Special Forces. Q Force, which was the Navy. And Space Force, which were uh, lower atmosphere and upper atmosphere operations. The bad guys were the Red Shadows. Um, and they uh, were recognized in a, in a recent um, Joe Con box set, which was the Vacation in the Shadows, and that was like bringing in those characters into uh, the real American hero uh, scale format. We had another advert, but we'll just skip forward. 
We'll try it. No, that's cool. But to support that, we had uh, uh, a comic book called Battle Action Force. Um, now, this was a weekly uh, comic that within how it held several storylines running simultaneously at once. So it wasn't one ongoing storyline, it was several each, each issue. Uh, the main big difference between the UK comics and the, the American uh, version of like uh, the G.I. Joe comic from Marvel was pretty much the portrayal of life and death. Uh, the body count in this was quite high. Um, and something you probably wouldn't really see nowadays in, in, in a children's comic. So here on, on this, you've got very much a graphic uh, portrayal of the Baroness like gunning down on two of the, the Red Shadows. And that leads into uh, what they developed for 1985, which was bringing in more of the characters that were more recognizable from the US line. So rather than having Z-Force, SAS, Q-Force, and Space Force, they just amalgamated everything into the Action Force team in 1985 and had a lot of the characters that were released from 82 to 84 at this point. Um, a lot of the, the more vehicles were brought in from the Hasbro line, but also keeping some of the, the most popular like Palatoy, line, uh, Palatoy designed products as well. Uh, within this, you had Cobra now becoming the bad guy. Now, within the storyline, the main uh, evil man behind the Red Shadows forsaken his terrorist organization and started Cobra. So rather than it being um, a lizard man from Cobra Law or perhaps like a, 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 a used car salesman who's like done with the world, in the UK, he was an existing terrorist organization that moved over and created Cobra. Within the comic book storylines, this created a lot of stories of this third party come, uh, uh, enemy faction fighting with Cobra. So they weren't necessarily Action Force versus Cobra, it was also Action Force versus Red Shadows and Red Shadows versus Action Force and versus Cobra at the same time. It was like a three way uh, struggle. No, I haven't much luck on those. Awesome. <laughs> no, don't worry. Sure. So, in 1985, um, General Mills decided to reorganize its portfolio of toy companies. And this was really seen most in Europe. You had Palatoy in the UK, you had Meccano in France, you had uh, Parker Brothers in Germany, Playmix in Sweden, um, and Clipper in Holland, and they decided to effectively sell off and amalgamate the whole thing. So Palatoy ceased operations in 1985, and it, although the products were uh, uh, still best-selling, because Palatoy distributed a lot of other toys as well, um, it was effectively for about a year or so uh, the end of Action Force as we knew it. This actually allowed, though, Hasbro to set up a European operations, and it, it, it wasn't really in existence. And, and in around about 86, Hasbro UK Industries Limited was formed, and one of its first product launches into the UK was taking Action Force and relaunching it into the UK. Now, this was very much more in line with uh, the uh, Real American Hero products. Uh, no Palatoy product, all uh, Hasbro design product, but because it was a few years behind from the, the original 1982 release, the assortments for the UK were very, very different. So it was almost like a best of taking all the best team members and launching them into it. And it was a huge, huge hit and success. Again, it was supported by comic book advertising and the comic book itself. Marvel took the reins this time rather than IPC Media and launched the, Battle Act, uh, uh, launched the Action Force comic. And these included reprints of the Larry Hammer strip, but also would create their own stories to encompass on either side. Now within this, we did get a few UK variants and in some cases unique products. 
So here, this is one of the most uh, uh, best known ones, were the, the what's commonly known as the European Tiger Force. So we had a uh, redecoed versions of Psych Out, Blizzard, Outback, Tunnel Rat, Sneak Peek, and Hit and Run. Um, and these are highly sought after today. Uh, we've recently had, uh, or, or we're getting, because we've not had it yet, have we? The Tiger Force Outback. Yes, coming up next. But, I mean, we talked about the dynamic physique of going into battle with that. This guy's got an orange tiger like on his chest. I mean, that takes some doing. It's going to frighten anybody off. What we're going to do is we're going to play the videos um, independently at the end of this presentation. So you get to see all of the ones that we wanted to kind of show you in and around. So if you just pre to pretend you remember everything we said. <laughs> we'll insert we it them, back in. Then, yes. So not only was some of the product different, but also some of the packaging artwork as well. And the reason for this is when that packaging artwork was originally done for its US domestic release, it would often contain characters that were not going to be available within the European assortments. So this led to quite a few revisions of artwork that was done. This is a uh, concept sketch for the earthquake. But we also had some beautiful bits of artwork done. Roll of thunder. Thunderclap. This is my favorite. The bug. <laughs> and the artist that did this also took care of the Swedish market as well. So uh, any international collectors may be familiar that um, with the G.I. Joe product that was released in Sweden, it was often a similar kind of packaging artwork, but minus any guns or knives. They were airbrushed out. Now the, the it was the same artist that took care of that and he would just literally take the original artwork and then rework out anything that was the, the weapon uh, by either painting the background or, or the body but then would normally have like a clenched fist or something like that. Yes. By 1980, 1994, the G.I. Joe line as a real American hero was like coming to the end um, but it gave Hasbro Europe at this point a chance to explore, just as it was happening in the States, uh, the, the 12-inch product again. And they relaunched Action Man, and this time taking a slightly different tack. So where I mentioned earlier, Action Man could be the good guy, he could be the bad guy. This was pretty much a, a different proposition from the point of view that he was uh, a, 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 a hero, he was a character. So this is kind of like almost getting into the realms of the action man that we're going to be seeing going forward uh, for the revolutions. This is also uh, test shots of my upcoming hairstyles. <laughs> um, so keep, keep a lookout on my Facebook page for these uh, making their way out. But the main bad guy for our action man at this point was Dr. X. And uh, you can see there that there are elements from Dave's hairstyle. <laughs> that's, that's harsh. <laughs> but he, he, he was uh, reworking Gung Ho into uh, this evil character here. But you also had other characters that were brought into it. Um, fans of like uh, the Vacation in Shadow set will recognize Natalie Poole there. But to begin with, it was starting off very much back in the military theme. So a lot of these products were all around military themes and the army and, and different adventures. But as it progressed, it soon became a little bit more extreme sports-like. Um, so you had rollerblading action man and you had uh, extreme surfing action man and things like that. But it was a huge, huge hit. A lot of these things had amazing play features and, and, and accessories. Now we're definitely coming back to this because this is my favorite advert of all time. But towards the end of that run, there was a very, very, very short-lived product line called Action Man Atom. And this stood for Alpha Teams on Machines. Um, it literally lasted for about uh, a two years tops. Uh, had a small cartoon uh, to support it, but was a two-pronged product line. So it was a four-inch action figure um, along with uh, a 12-inch offering as well. Um, this really led us right up to, at this point, um, uh, Rise of Cobra. So from, from 
this point onwards, pretty much everything that we then received in the UK was the same as what you guys got in the States. I will say, however, we did not receive anything after Rise of Cobra, so until now. So I mentioned earlier, we're a little bit behind. So this year is our 50th anniversary of Action Man, um, and it gives me great pleasure and it is a huge honor for uh, this show to be able to talk to you about a new product that's coming out. Thank you to Hasbro and Art and Science, which is a, a in celebration of the 50th years of Action Man. So we're gonna go through the first six products that are gonna be available very, very shortly. Now these are all to celebrate the 50th anniversary, so they're all kind of like looking back at the last 50 years. Six initial products, they all feature gripping hands, realistic flop tear, looking at August for the first two, and then the rest to follow before the end of the year. So the first one that will be launched will be the Action Soldier, and he is the classic style of, of the, the very first product. Comes with a dog tag as well. The other one is, from our side of things, now we cling on to a lot of like, you know, dates. So not only is it the 50th anniversary of Action Man, it's also the 50th anniversary of the last time we won the World Cup. <laughs> so in, what better in, way? In football, in real football. <laughs> So what better way to remember this by releasing uh, Action Man in a soccer outfit as well. So those are the first two products. The next ones are all going to be, uh, so these are open box, sorry, uh, these are closed box and then the rest will be open box ones. We've then got the paratrooper, the scuba diver, the British infantryman, and the ski patrol. So that completes the lineup for this year. One of the most exciting elements to me is that within this, we have packaging design being done by some of the original Palatoy artists and illustrators. So Douglas Hart has stepped forward and he's been doing uh, a lot of line art um, for the actual packaging. And there completes the, 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 the lineup for, for this year. Now, based on the success of this, there is a follow-up to come. <coughs> And this is the proposed lineup for 2017, a further uh, 10 products. And if you're a fan of Action Man, you might be able to guess from those silhouettes what some of those are. I'm still trying to work out one or two. Yeah. But that's not the only thing that's going on for like the 50th anniversary celebration. So IDW, some of you uh, may be aware, are launching an Action Man comic comic book series that will like, closely tie into the whole new uh, crossover universe that's being created by Hasbro. Um, and this effectively follows that 90s version of Action Man that we, we looked at, where it was a character. Um, but this is like the successor to him. So this will be launched very, very soon. And we've also sending Action Man into the upper atmosphere as well. So there's going to be uh, uh, launching next weekend uh, a rocket up to uh, get the Guinness Book of Records for sending a 12-inch figure into, into the upper atmosphere in space. And this has been done by a huge Action Man fan. He did a Kickstarter campaign that was successfully funded to, to be able to like, do the endeavor. And he will create uh, videos for, for everybody to see. But as part of this, again, incorporating uh, former Palatoy employees and designers, they've created, um, well, they've kitbashed together a, a, a module to be able to do it, but they've, they've, they've created uh, some new outfits and things like that to help celebrate the launch. So we're marking the 50th anniversary of Action Man by doing a, a, a best of line, uh, there's a comic book series, and sending him into space. And you might even see Rom up there, you never know. <laughs> <coughs> Rom! <laughs> but if you want to know more, there's a couple of options open to you. Chris mentioned we're, we're both members of a, of a podcast called The Full Force. Um, full Force! Which is, uh, for, for those who are not familiar, The Full, full Force was the replacement on the Sunbow 
uh, cartoons. So instead of Yojo, they redubbed it as Full Force. And what Chris did there was pretty much an accurate uh, representation of how bad the dubbing was when they actually done this. Um, we also have a show in the UK called Roll Out Roll Call. Uh, you have online references like yojo.com and bloodforthebaron.com. In terms of Action Man, I did actually miss off a couple of books. There's the official dossier book, and uh, there is uh, a book by Alan Hall, the three books, in fact, which are a great reference to um, all of the um, Action Man uh, palatal issue products, uh, and that's Alan Hall uh, by Model as Law. So, any questions at all? Uh, and if we're lucky, we'll, we'll try and get some of those adverts running. Sir, at the back. Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to ask if there was any truth to the rumor that the roller attack that was actually based on uh, the teenage life of Chris McLeod. It could well have been. Um, they, the, some of the products that were done there were, were uh, very reflective for that uh, period of time, so extreme sports and things like that. So it kind of it's just as it's funny to like look back at some of these things anyway. Um, back then, they, they were in line and in keeping with like that, that look and feel. I think it, Chris at that prayer in time was probably like on rollerblades. Um, you've only got to ask him and he'll get them out again. Any other questions? Okay. We're good for the adverts, right. So try and mentally insert these back into the point where we were like talking. So that was the 1982 advert uh, introducing the line of like Action Force. I promise you, that is what all toy shops look like back then. They're all really dark, little dingy corner shops that sold toys. So there we go. That was uh, an insight into the 12 inch SAS line. And like I said, there was huge areas of interest in, in the SAS as a result of the Iranian embassy. Um, so Palatal was very receptive to that. And the SAS key figure was at that point immediately came the, the, the best selling uh, figure within that lineup. Attacks led by Baron Armblad and his evil forces. Seen here in exclusive coverage, have forced the country to take action. With me in the studio tonight is the squad leader from the newly formed SAS and the head of the new Z Force, Captain Grant Campbell, who will be taking command of their combined troops at a secret destination later tonight. More news as it's made from new action forces. And it's fair to say that was pretty representative of all news broadcasts in the UK <laughs> as well. <laughs> and not much has actually changed. Now where that was the first introductory advert for the new 12 inch line, they were using the uh, same products that were released in the States uh, for the familiarity. But from that point onwards, they literally started then creating all new characters and new outfits and new designs. Tiger Cat are ready for combat. 
So within that one, you can see where there's the changing over of the branding. So from Action Force, uh, International Heroes, to G.I. Joe, the Action Force, and then by 1992, it just became like G.I. Joe, the UK. This is my favorite, though. This is the best ad ever. I mean, the production values within that are phenomenal with all like the sets and the costume designs. But then to have like a vote as to whether or not you're going to let the bad guy live or die, you know, that's, that's kind of reflective of, I think, a lot of our attitudes in the UK. So that one is a representation of where the brand was fully moving over to like G.I. Joe, but there's still a reference there to like G.I. Joe International Heroes. Cobra are attacking Action Force headquarters, but the transportable battle platform is in position. Fire! Those torpedoes! As the hydrofoils unleash their rockets, flint surface-to-surface missiles are the So that's an advert from 87 as part of the uh, relaunch from uh, Hasbro UK Industries. Um, and very, very similar and using a lot of the footage that would have been used in the, in the US adverts, but just overlaying with all new audio and like uh, graphics. Gentlemen, the world is in terrible peril from this man, Baron Ironblood, an evil genius who is determined to rule the world. These are the creatures he has created to help him. Now you must create your own action force dedicated to the Baron's downfall. Captain Campbell, you will take command of Z-Force, land-based attack troops. Captain Buckingham, the SAS, Crack Commander Squad. Captain McLaren, Q-Force, Subaquatics, and Captain Connors, Space Force. Expect the unexpected. Where will the Baron strike next? Action Force Toys, the battle has just begun. So that was kind of like the introduction to like the, all the teams from like uh, 83. The Action Force Armored Troop Carrier is ambushed by Roboskull, Cobra Commander's ultimate weapon. Only the Triad Fighter can draw its fire, while Duke and his buddies make their escape. The second part moves in. Roboskull is down but not out. And where will Cobra strike next? Action Force Toys in Battle Action Force Comic Weekly. And the awesome Robo Skull. A giant red skull flying through space with machine guns for eyes. Um, there's not much that can be added to that. It's bonkers, it's amazing, and there's an amazing custom in the competition this year. The wicked Baron Ironblood wants to rule the world through terror. Create your own action force to stop him. The Baron commands the idiot hyena to attack with Kraken in command. But they don't know about the new SAS Wolverine. The Wolverine fires its first missiles. Kraken tries to strike back, but the power of the Wolverine is decisive. Operation Hyena is over, but where will the Baron strike next? Action Force Toys, the battle has just begun. So there you saw a Hiss tank, but a, a lot of the US products were renamed for the UK market. <coughs> so uh, the Hiss tank became like the Hyena. And the Kraken there was a sea monster that was part of uh, Baron Ironblood's army, which were like a bunch of cloned lizards that they found in the North Pole. Good story. <laughs> Cobra has developed the awesome 
some stinger, but a daring raid is planned by Action Bobby. It's the striker with airtight, flat, and driver crankcase. The stinger will surprise Cobra. So there you heard the full force yell, uh, which is uh, uh, what it became known as, you know, instead of like Yo Jo for us over in the UK. But that literally rounds it up. I'm very sorry for like uh, the, the adverts not working when they should. My but... fault. <laughs> no one's fault. <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the, the presentation. What I will say is that both Chris and I are here all weekend. So if you've got any questions at all, do not hesitate to come up and, and ask us at any point. It's never a problem. Um, I, Daryl and Mark uh, will be running the Hasbro brew. Uh, if you've got any questions specifically on the, the, the art and science and the Hasbro uh, Action Man 50th anniversary products, uh, Daryl should be able to uh, assist you on that. But you know, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you.